Hello, good people of the internet and fellow photographers. If you've been using SD or micro SD cards for extended periods of time, you will know that sooner or later, all of them will fail. And while not directly related to photography, you will definitely have encountered SD card failures if you use a Raspberry Pi, dash cams or security cameras with continuous recording. And before you start thinking that flash storage failures are some kind of planned obsolescence conspiracy from SanDisk or Samsung, it's unfortunately what happens to all flash storage. This might not be the most interesting of subjects, but it is worth knowing why SD cards die and what to do about it. SD cards popped up around the turn of the millennia and have come a long way in the last 20 odd years. The first card I owned, which was used to store MP3s on my Nokia 3300, and for whatever reason still lives in my desk drawer, boasted an incredible capacity of 256 megabytes. The eagle-eyed among you will have noticed that this is actually an MMC card and not an SD card, but there was some type of intercompatibility between the two and SD cards would have been around the same size at the time. Anyway, this card could store anything from five to 10 photos shot with my Fuji X-T4 or about a third of a CD. Those were the days when optical media outclassed flash storage. A couple of years later, the family's first digital camera, which used SD cards and not compact flash cards, came with a two gig memory card. Inexplicably, I also happen to have that one laying around. Fun fact, our first CF card had a capacity of 64 megabytes. Today, we've got micro SDXC cards yes, micro, that have a one terabyte capacity. My very first computer's hard drive could be mirrored well, about 15 or 20 times onto one of them. On a very basic level, each SD card has two components in the form of individual chips, which it shares with any type of flash storage, a controller and the NAND flash, which is where the actual data is stored. Generally, you will find that SD cards have more than just a single NAND chip. So a 16 gig card might have two 8 gig chips and an SSD will obviously have many more NAND chips than that. Different to SD cards, any decent SSD will have one more component, which is its DRAM. The DRAM contains, among other things, a map of where each bit is stored. So instead of having to go look for the data itself, the controller simply checks the map stored in the much faster DRAM and makes its way directly to the desired place. I mentioned that just to show you why you wouldn't want to run Windows or any other operating system or directly edit photos and videos on the SD card. SD cards random read and write speeds are dreadful and potentially worse than those of a spinning rust drive. Before talking about prevention, a quick word on why SD cards fail. Just like any other flash storage device, be it an SSD, USB stick or the storage in your phone, the NAND flash chips in an SD cards wear out through continued use. Every time you write to a block on the chip, you ever so slightly shorten its lifespan. Once that block wears out, you will never be able to write to it again. That can lead to your SD card acting up or dying altogether. You might have heard that SSDs such as this one from Samsung are more reliable or last longer than SD cards. That is true, but the reasons are pretty obvious. Instead of having just one or two NAND chips, these things can fit many more which come into play when wear leveling is used. We'll have a look at what that is in just a minute. SSDs will frequently also contain a generous amount of reserved blocks which become active when another has been worn out. SSDs also have the ability to self-monitor and self-diagnose issues using SMART, which is short for self-monitoring, analysis and reporting technology. The SSD will report its state to the operating system. That way the operating system can tell you when it's time to replace your storage medium. The SSD will report any errors to the OS and the OS will sound the alarm. An SD card can do no such thing. There's only a limited number of things you can do and fit on the tiny PCB that fits in an SD card. In addition to that, SD cards aren't meant to be powered on at all times or for hours on end. The lack of smart and the aforementioned DRAM make SD cards a terrible medium for long-term storage. Don't 
even think about it, no matter how cheap they are. There are good reasons why nobody does it. Then there is, of course, also the physical aspect. The NAND chips on this drive have plenty of room for cooling and everything can be neatly spaced out. With an SD card, the individual components are crammed onto the smallest of spaces and in your camera, it is sandwiched between whatever is either side of the port and heat generated will not be going anywhere fast. The good news is that SD cards should easily survive temperatures of around 85 degrees Celsius and it's unlikely the heat produced by a camera would kill it. Manufacturers will also use certain technologies to counteract an early demise, namely their leveling. Instead of always writing the first file you save on the card on the first block, it will shuffle them around making sure each block wears out at a similar rate. Unfortunately, almost no SD card manufacturer will tell you whether they use their leveling or not, which is a shame as an SD card with this feature should be quite a bit more reliable. I went with UHS-2 cards from Angelbird, whose offices are incidentally about half an hour's drive from where I'm sitting, for my X-T4, partially because they explicitly state that they support their leveling on their website. Their leveling also means that none of the bad blocks will ever be exposed to the file system, meaning there is no way for your camera to write to them, which could lead to corrupted data. Once the SD card with their leveling has passed a certain number of bad blocks, the controller will employ its self-protection and completely lock the card. That way it'll be in a read-only mode. You won't lose any data, but obviously you won't be able to use the card anymore. It's possible that the card could have been used for a few more shoots, but I'd rather have it locked when it's still safe to read the data than have it last a bit longer risking corrupted data. Now that we know why SD cards fail, we should probably take a minute or so to talk about how to avoid such a disaster. First and foremost, don't buy dodgy cards. If you buy cheap SD cards, there are good reasons as to why they cost so little. Reputable manufacturers such as SanDisk or Samsung or Angelbird will selectively pick the best NAND chips for their cards. Anything that doesn't meet their standard will be passed on. And those buying the less acceptable chips will pack them into SD cards and sell them for next to nothing. There are also plenty of counterfeits to be found, so make sure you buy your SD cards from a source you trust. An untrained eye won't be able to tell the difference compared to the real thing. If a deal sounds too good to be true, it might well be because it isn't true. Another fun little thing scammers do is faking the capacity of an SD card. And I don't mean they just put a 256 gig sticker on an eight gig card. Your OS will actually report it to be 256 gig. And you'll only notice something is wrong once you fill up those eight gigs, very sneaky. The next bit of advice is one frequently mentioned by the so-called data hoarders of this world who buy many, many hard drives. But I've never heard it being applied to SD cards and yet I don't think it's a bad bit of advice. Don't buy multiple cards or hard drives at once from the same store. Instead, if you have to buy them at the same time, buy your cards from different stores. Better yet, if you can wait a couple of months between purchases, then do it. There is always a possibility that a certain batch of hardware contains a higher number of failing parts. And by varying the place you purchase them from, you will likely not be getting two cards from the same bad batch. By managing your cards, you can potentially also avoid disaster. If you use your cards sequentially, they might fail around the same time. By sequentially, I mean using card one, taking it out of the camera and inserting card two, then removing card two and going back to card one again. Instead, I'd recommend only using one of the cards while keeping a second and a third and a fourth and so on as backup in case you fill up your first card. Once your primary card dies, you can move on to the next one, which should still be rather fresh. But if you've been using the next card for a similar amount of time to the card that just died, it might be on its last legs. Other ways of extending the life of your SD cards is by just treating them right. SD card. There is no other like SD card. So treat her right. Can't believe I left that in the script. Don't reformat them too often. Don't pull them out of your camera or reader while data is still being written. And be careful when removing them from your camera and inserting them into an SD card reader. It's the nature of the beast. These 
cards do experience more wear and tear than any other flash storage devices. This thing here will be built into a PC and it'll stay there. There's no risk of it being dropped or the pins on the back being damaged the same can't be set for SD cards. I hope that by now you know just about everything there is to know about SD cards because we have reached the end of this video. I know, I know it wasn't the most interesting of subjects, but still, if you did learn anything, please remember to hit that like button to show your appreciation. If, however, you didn't enjoy this video, hit the dislike button twice to make it extra impactful. I've been Liam Alexander Coleman and it has been just about enough from me for one day. I will see you in the next one. Bye.